Yeah, hello. Hey, you going? Hey. Yeah, um, what have you been up to? Hey? Uh, I said, what have you been up to? Feeding goats. Feeding, feeding goats. Yeah. Oh. You serve beer to pigs? <laughs> <laughs> I feed corn to goats. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 um, what's it called? Uh, yeah. W- what does that mean when you um? Cause I was reading when I was reading this book, I noticed like there's a word here. Uh, it's called Aesculapius, and they. And they do like what you do, I guess. Like they capitalize A and E. A and E used to be um, stuck together when they first made the English language. O and E, A and E were called diphthongs. They were a single character, you know, when uh, monotype came out. Printers had to assemble letters in a gadget they held in their hand to make up the paragraphs. And from that, they would use it to print on paper. Mm-hmm. And the letters A and E and O and E were combined letters called diphthongs. Oh, okay. Huh. I-, I see... I was, I heard you mention too a while ago. You said um, for like the term Lucifer. You said Lucy's the first woman. The, yeah, the name they gave to the oldest skeleton they found in the Aldivai Gorge in Africa. Oh. Uh. And uh, fer is the French word for iron. Yeah. So it's Iron Lucy. Mm. So, but then I, I, I remember reading in That's your... the same thing as saying Jennifer. Oh, Jenny. But Jenny what? is a genie. It came out of a bottle. And it's she's been treated like iron. In other words, it's not her first time around. Oh, oh okay. Put back in the fire and brought out. It's... Again, that's how you make steel. You toughen it up by putting it back in the fire. Well, with human beings, you toughen them up by giving them more than one life. They die, and you clone them again from their DNA. Well, I've also heard you in your in your recent and not your like your past post. Um, you you also said Lucifer was the liver or something like that. The who? Lucifer was a term for the liver. And the bias? Devil. Devil is evil, and backwards it's liver. Oh. Live backwards. Mm. So when so when you hear Lucifer, you know they call it the light bringer in the morning. So that's just like a lower level, I guess. Venus, the morning star. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. And the only reason why they call it the a- uh, adversary is because um, uh, cause they don't because they hated a uh, clan mother or they went to war with clan mother. Yeah, basically, the, the what this whole story is about mm-hmm. is about Neanderthalers being unable to move around. And looking for a vehicle by which they could move around. And you start with uh, the original vehicle is a donkey. Mm -hmm. And then you go from a donkey to a horse. Then you go from a horse to horsepower. So automobiles, cars. And then the idea comes to them, reincarnation, rain carnation. So the idea is if you're going to have a 
vehicle, why not have one that you can fit into and live your life with it? It would be your vehicle. So the idea is in a human body, the center of control over the body is where the electricity and the chemicals are made to get reaction from the rest of the body. That's in the endocrine glands, the pituitary glands, all of the uh, nervous system. So that is the part that is below the brain and above the spine at the narrowing in the body, which is the neck. So he said, imagine if we could piggyback on a human being. So he did that from the beginning, right? The description they give to that is watch kids going to school. We are piggybacking on those kids because we wrote all the books they're carrying. So they're going to school to transfer the information from the bag on their back into their brain. Mm. Why can't we become the, the part in the neck? Why can't we genetically engineer ourselves into the neck? And that's when they decided they would Closed down Japan for 200 years while they worked on a plan. The plan was to get the Japanese to do the work on cloning that would allow a Neanderthaler medulla pons thalamus, hypothalamus, all that stuff that's between the spine and the brain, Mm -hmm. miniaturize it small enough so that it could fit in with the cocktail that they would then put in an egg and make new people. And they succeeded. So as you walk around today, Mm -hmm. you have the original female parts from clan mothers. You have the original male parts that they derive from clan mother by breaking up her genetic code and making males. Mm -hmm. But you also now have a control mechanism that lives with you every day. Much of the time people spend arguing, they're not arguing with other people. They're arguing with themselves. But in fact, it's not themselves. In fact, it's the control mechanism over their feelings has been replaced by a Neanderthaler mechanism. So that, in fact, every time they go to make a decision, they cannot access the information from their spine, which is the background information they need to make decisions, They can only use their brain, but the information coming down from below comes from the Neanderthaler, the piggy that piggybacks in their neck. The piggy has an advantage because it controls the reins that when you pull on it, something in the body happens because it releases chemistry or electrical shocks. So they can make a person 
who is not willing to will their will feel depressed. They can make that person who is willing to will their will feel happy. Don't worry, be happy is basically the the feeling that a person has. But you have to remember what it is that Neanderthalers want. They want you to work. <laughs> mm. They want you to work hard. They want you to be um, feeling bad when you're not working. They want you to collect money. They want you to save money because they are accumulators. Mm -hmm. They want you to control the people around you. So all the time you're doing those things they want, they make you feel powerful. They make you feel in charge. They make you feel good by pulling on the different chemicals. There are 16 different chemicals that they can access. And it's a balance between these 16 chemicals that makes the feelings you have today. But they can also, for example, pull uh, an electrical circuit and cause your sciatic nerve to cause pain in your leg. So that physically, not just mentally, they can prevent you from doing certain things. So if you're hopping around on one leg, you don't get as much done as if you're, you've got your two legs functioning. It's like having a flat on a car all the time. So that's the concept. Now, of course, it's, it's all chemistry and much more complicated than uh, an explanation, an overview of, of the premise of it all. But that's basically what they do. They have penetrated the neck of all people. And they've done it by killing off people and making sure that the new ones that are being born are being born from those people which they have directly genetically engineered. Where, like, where, do you, where did you see this? Like this? Well, it's, it's what they do in Freemasonry. Oh, if you are a supporter of Freemasonry for 20 years, Mm-hmm. you can get, and I've told you this before, called in to a meeting. Mm-hmm. And at that meeting, you're told there's an opportunity which they could pass on to you that would make you very wealthy. That opportunity, however, requires that your wife be on side. When your wife comes into the meeting, she is told the story that you have an opportunity as a family to be very wealthy. But there is one condition. She must agree to carry an egg to term. They go through the process of telling her that's what the Virgin Mary did. Good enough for Jesus and his mother must be good enough for you, type of thing. So when she agrees to carry a baby to term, that baby is an original. Now here to understand this concept you have to think of it like Coca Cola. When you make Coca-Cola originally, you're making a syrup, not a seltzer water, not a carbonated water. It's just a syrup. 
the syrup is the formula and some water that allows it to flow. So let's say that a jar of that syrup or a canister or whatever it comes in is 62% syrup and the balance the other 38% is water. Now you send that to a uh, bottler or to a theater, for example, and somebody comes and orders a Coke. Well, you put it in a machine that puts some of the syrup and some carbonated water, they mix together, and you get your Coke. Now, the equivalent in cola says that out of the syrup, you can make a soft drink, and depending on the brand you're making, that is 13% syrup or 12% syrup or 11% syrup or 10% or 9% or 8%. So depending on the brand you're making, you make it stronger or weaker, but it's never as strong as the syrup itself, which was 62%. In genetic engineering, when that woman goes in and is artificially inseminated, she's going to have a baby equal to the syrup. 62% perfect. But that baby will begin a process of creating future generations. It will have children, and those children will be somewhere in the vicinity of 13 or 12% of the original that that woman made from the original egg. Their children will have a level of 11 or 10%, and their children will have a level of 9 or 8%. That's why they always talk about four generations. So four generations down, the 8 or 9% is sufficient to make people do what the original intended them to do. Mm. You don't need to be 62%. 8% is enough. But after the fourth generation, the system starts to break down. So people like the Masons have to monitor families like the Mormons do. You know, They mm-hmm. monitor the surnames and, and then track because if each generation lives 60 years, and 20 of those years are overlapping, then you could have 100 years go by before you need the booster, a new one, to start the process again. And that's why they have to track. So that's what the Eastern, uh, Eastern Stars do. I've heard they keep track on people, you know. Gossip and stuff. Well, Eastern Star, Mormons, uh, nuns, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that happen behind convent walls that people don't see. Mm -hmm. Sure, the girls that go into nunneries go there for security because they're basically afraid of men. And, and they want the security of a whole bunch of nuns surrounded by walls. But 
inside of there, the superiors Mm -hmm. are those people who agree to the bigger process because they want sovereignty and security, and the government offers them sovereignty and security. The government says you don't have to pay taxes. You can live together. Um, we, We will provide you with uh, government grants to handle things like hospitals or orphanages or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they make a lot of money, and they have a lot of security, and the leaders have sovereignty over this gang of sheep they call nuns, uh, which, by the way, is the word iron in French, one. And, And in there... They can basically say to the girls, um, as part of your initiation process to become a full-fledged nun, you have to agree to be inseminated artificially with uh, an egg. Uh-huh. And then, of course, they, they take the baby and they tell the registrar and the government that this baby was left at the door they're going to take care of it, and therefore they give it a name and everything. And I wonder why they've never, I've never heard, uh, have you ever heard any case of, like, you know, none speaking out, exposing it? Uh, not, uh, I haven't heard directly, but I have seen uh, girls uh, who, when they came face to face with what they had to do, in their final vows, leave. Because they didn't want anything to do with that, but they don't speak out, usually. At least none of the ones that I know of. What they normally do is they become uh, nurses or or something like that, Mm. follow through on the career path without having that uh, extra burden of uh, agreeing to what the nuns wanted them to do. So, the whole thing with uh, like with the Catholic Church and you know, bring like it's it's known like you know they have like it's like a big uh, like it's a homosexual a type of factory. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I guess. It's the same thing as LDS, Latter-day Saints. You know, the the big lie about LDS is that they are polygamists. But polygamy is the only way they can explain the fact that there are so many children and and so few men in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But what is really going on, it's it's part of their ceremonial life is they get inseminated artificially. I mean, it's not difficult, and it's not difficult to understand I because it happens on farms all over the world every day. We have a factory just down the road from here. The farmers call them cow fuckers. Oh, yeah, they, they shoot the uh, the sperm. They get, they get a horse to turn yeah. the thing on, and then they shoot Cows, it horses, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same thing. <laughs> After all, human beings are just animals. And and what they've done is basically tried to get what was the best animal of its day and use its DNA to manufacture as many as they can of the same thing. Well, masonry has the same idea. Use the best masons you've had in the past to make more masons in the future. Until the Neanderthaler uh, basically says, well, I don't want just the best warrior that I had 
in the past. I would like to have the best warrior who's also the best-looking woman. So instead of having a clone of a man, I'm going to have a combo unit here with a body of a man but an outside of female. The female is a better sales tool. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get things done, you got a better chance going through a female to get it done than through a male, especially dealing with high-powered people. Uh, the female being high-powered herself because internally she's a male and externally she's a female, using the charms of the female, she can infiltrate much better than males and get males to do what they want. After all, males are kind of like mules. They, they're just work animals. They, uh, they want sex and a sandwich, you know. You give, them, give them both and, and they're happy. But but um, but I see that like the how men think like that. That's that's partly because of, you know the the culture, it's pushed. You know that's what I see in the media. That's what so like every movie is all about. You know the sex and of course nothing sex sells. So if you want to get things done mm-hmm. by men, you're more likely to get it done by sending in a woman. Because she'll give men what they want. Men are not really interested in money. The money they're interested in is survival money, but the rest is to give to women. (laughs) When you you get down to it, right? Yeah. And then the the Mm -hmm. third step Mm -hmm. in in the making of this male-female is, okay, now we got the body... And and the brain made, how do I piggyback in there? So they go back into the formula and take out the parts that would make the medulla, the pons, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, that kind of stuff. And they dump it and replace it with the same stuff from a Neanderthaler. So, in fact, the Neanderthalers get to ride on the best vehicle possible, the ones they've manufactured themselves that are perfect slaves. And and that's why they have to go through a process of genetically introducing each stage and testing it out. So... The first stages were to make gay people gay. And but gay people have always been around for... Yeah, except the gay people have only been around as long as there has been two genders. Male, female was a hermaphrodite at the beginning, so there was no need for gay people. They were two genders in one. Mm -hmm. But when they made male, they broke a leg off the X and turned it into a Y. Mm -hmm. But some legs were broken a little shorter than others, Uh, and and the ones that were a little longer still had that female instinct. Uh And that made gay people. And Uh then they had to reverse the process then and make females who had uh, some male inference, like instead of breaking the, the leg off at the hip, they broke it off at the ankle, which basically symbolizes making a lesbian, yeah. some female but who has male tendencies. That was in the n- numerology Number nine, because number nine is made in the image of number six. To look at them, they're just upside down one from the other. 
the symbol for equilibrium. Number six is the number for female. Number eight is the number for male. Number seven is the altering that gets done in between. You've got the number six, you alter it, and you make a number eight, and then you alter the number eight to make it look like a six upside down, and that gives you a number nine. That's the gate. Mm. Now the next step is to make the ten. The ten is the male female. Therefore, a reversal of the original hermaphrodite. So what they have now introduced this year officially is the number 10. The new one that's why you got a guy like uh, Tiger Woods, another guy like a uh, race car driver there uh, for England, Formula One. They are um, effeminate looking but very male in their activity. Now you're reversing the process, and what you want is a female that's very female-looking, but very male in her activities. This, uh, that's I Hillary like Clinton. Uh. That's Condoleezza Rice. That's uh, uh, Angela Merkel. That's Margaret Thatcher. Gold of my ear, those types. They're going to be put in positions of power. They start by putting them in positions of power in corporations. So you've had corporate leaders at Hewlett Packard, for example, and now at Yahoo. And those are female male. You've had them in positions of power as um, Secretary of State like Condoleezza Rice but what they want now is the one that will step in to the top job become the president mm. so uh, now like with the elite like they're all like I, I see a, a, from what I've heard like I've heard a lot of them are all like homosexual and they don't even like women they hate like women and they all just you know, and they have a lot of, you know, they had this. They hated real women. What you have today is you've replaced the O in woman mm-hmm. with two E's. We men. We men. It sounds like woman, but it's women. <laughs> what does that mean? It's the it's the woman. It means that... it's a two in one. Oh, man. Wow. And with the we, Mm -hmm. small, it means the neck has been changed to Neanderthaler. Wow. That's why everything about women Mm -hmm. has a uh, male connotation. They call them man, fe. Male. Yeah. A female is iron male, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Put back and done over. Uh, wow. Well, Think so, of a blacksmith. Right? He, he's got iron. Yeah, it's like that principle. Okay. Wow. So wh- how do you feel about, like, um... Like with the mind control of these now, like on have you ever heard of like the new age movement and Yeah, it's it's all part of the skulls part of skull and bones. The skulls part. Yeah. It's the what happens in the head. Oh, oh, 
Oh, okay. All right, all right. So that's the med. That's the Medi part, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Cindy and Medi. You know, there there's two parts here. There's one of a physical body, but then during the lifetime itself, uh, there's the social engineering, and that includes the teaching you get from school, mm-hmm. the medical uh, pills they get you to take to change the chemistry of your body, the movies that are made at the cinema so that you're getting impressions of what the real world's all about. Yeah. But it's based basically the world they want you to believe in, yeah. not the real world. Yeah, I've read about that. Like, like this world is like it, they call it a, another word. Word they call it a technocracy. Yeah. Just you know, <laughs> what people think take for granted is actually that science is on their side. Yeah, and science is just people don't understand that. They're managed scientifically. Yeah, sci- science is taking rules of nature mm-hmm. and manipulating them in the same way as metallurgy mm-hmm. melts down metals into its component parts and recombines it into new stuff like brass. Mm-hmm. You know? So science is basically learning the lessons of nature and then manipulating them to make tools and instruments that will will their will. And that's what they mean, like they want to learn the secrets of nature. But yeah. but then there's but then there's a, a you know pseudo science that they that they try to peddle to people because people believe that the people today believe like science is like this like a like a religion. They believe in it like they. Well, and the doctor and, and all this people, stuff. If people are prepared to believe uh-huh. that a guy died for them on a cross yeah. 2,000 years ago, mm-hmm. I mean, what <laughs> else can they not believe? Yeah. That's about as stupid as you can get. Yeah, no, no. no. It, we're going from, because science is a new religion I see today. It's the new religion. It's because we just went from, you know, the black coated priesthood to the white coat priesthood. Yeah, what they're basically we... saying is that 2,000 years ago, mm-hmm. the scientists developed a way to change men into women and use that technology until they have finished their testing on perfect slaves, and then they will crucify them. They will uh, put a crown of thorns on their head called the media. Mm -hmm. They will stick a nail in their hand uh, called religion. They will stick another nail in the other hand called politics. And they will take their two feet and put them together and put a nail through them and call that work and family sticking you down to one place. Mm. And then they will take their spear and spear you in the ribs so they can access your DNA and make new people based upon who you had become prior to your crucifixion. Wow. And and we are at the point now where crucifixion of the northern hemisphere is set to go. Mm. It's in their world they don't call it crucifixion, they call it crucifixion. The word cruci comes from the word ruse. Uh, huh. Rusi. So. Russian. Ruse. 
Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem. Oh man. So when you see, you see when you read like you read the book the like the Bible and you seem to go over the um the allegories. Um I never how come you never go over like the esoteric? Is that like uh is just no time for that or it's just it it is too complicated mm-hmm. to teach to other people. Mm-hmm. When it took me ten years yeah. to learn, how can I teach that to people in the time we have left? Yeah. We're basically at the end times. Yeah. So therefore, I had to start a project that would try to filter out of the larger population those few people mm-hmm. who had the time and the will to learn and the ability to understand. So rather than ask them questions, I present them pieces of a puzzle. If they can start to figure out, then they're worth my time. If not, they're not worth my time. And many of the people that have come to me have been sent to me. They didn't want to learn. They wanted me to stop teaching. So you have like what, agents and stuff come to you? Yeah. They attend the seminar. They steal some of the props that I use for teaching certain slides that I had made up and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so that I'm hampered in my ability to teach others. The other things that they did, Bell Canada sent two groups of people who came in pretending they were on my side and because they were in my house, one for a month and the other one for few days, uh, were able to use my computer, download all my passwords and everything onto a hard disk, and, mm-hmm. and then take it out from here. And they set up a, a house in the neighborhood where they have replicated me. So that they make themselves the main computer, and they make me a local user of my own computer. (laughs) So that when I send things out, it goes to them first, and then they send it out. And that way they've been able to cut down the recipient of the information I sent out to a very few people, many of which I have found are on their side. But that's not a bad thing because those are the people I'm trying to reach. I don't want to reach some person who hasn't got a clue. I don't need to reach people who have no interest, the people that I need to reach the most are the ones who are promoting the system the way it is and giving them sufficient information to realize that they've been lied to, that in the end, they are the first to go. The system never kills its enemies first. It always kills its friends first. That provides them deniability in what they're going to do afterwards. When they set up the concentration camps in Poland Mm -hmm. for World War II, the first people they picked up were gays. Yeah, they always, yeah. They... The second group were gypsies. The third group were Freemasons. Mm-hmm. 
And then they got down to killing Jewish people. Yeah. At no time did they ever get around to killing Judeans. Judeans set up the system to make money on the death of the Jewish. Mm. So, um, that's what they're going to do again. Like, yeah, like I know like they have the do. FEMA camps and stuff. And isn't FEMA like just, it's just I think it's just Iron Lady, right? Or That's like another... Fee man. Fee, uh, collects fees. <laughs> and it's a fairy. It's a fairy tale. Fay in French, F-E-E, means fairy. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad I like... I always thought, when I was younger, I always said, my grandparents, oh, like, you should learn French, you should learn French. No, you know, but you know, I understand a lot of the words, but um, think, I can't think speak. of a, a guy uh, like Ted Turner. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> okay. He's he's about as in it as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> he's so open with it though. And and he's given billions of dollars, mm-hmm. and he's given instructions every now and then when the UN needs some money, send them a billion dollars or yeah. two, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Because that makes him look like he's a nice guy in yeah, public, yeah. and it's it's not his money anyways. <laughs> it's their money, but they need to launder it through his activities. Mm. Well, some some of those people have been told that at the appropriate moment, mm-hmm. what they need to do is leave where they are, especially if they're in places like in New York, Mm -hmm. and get to Ottawa as quickly as possible to provide them with an escape route they have built into buildings, a separate elevator that goes to a separate place in the basement. Where they will get into a subway type car, as that will take them up past Albany because they got to pick up some politicians in Albany, mm-hmm. and take them to Oswego. Oswego, Oswego. Oswego. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next to the Lake uh, Lake Ontario. Under the lake, out at Kingston, between Queen's University and and the uh, military college, mm-hmm. uh, where is the entrance to the Rideau Canal. And the Rideau Canal will then take them all the way up to Ottawa, where they will disembark and they will be at the site of the new capital of North America, as New York is being destroyed. What they are not told is their task is finished in New York. They don't need them in Ottawa. So along the way between Albany and Ottawa, probably under Lake Ontario, Mm-hmm. The car will stop, and then they will die, and nobody knows they're there. So nobody is going to be looking for them there. Huh. But their task is over. Huh. They don't need a Ted Turner. Yeah, Ted Turner is a front man. No, he's. Yeah. I, I know there's people higher than him. Like, and you know, even Rothschild. Like, anybody well, that I see in front of me is is a front man. Look at the name Brothman. Yeah, you know Brothman. who the Brothmans are. Uh huh. Yeah. They make the whiskey. Yeah. Well, don't read the first letter, and oh. start reading from there. 
Ron? Ron, man? Front man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> F-R-O-N. The T is silent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a whole... Who are the Bronfmans? They they set up Al Capone. They took him out of New York, brought him to Chicago, and then they got the politicians in Washington to change the laws. And yeah. and um, Al Capstone, set, right? <laughs> yeah, set the whole thing up. Oh man, they're front men. Yeah, I mean it's a, that's what I that's all I see. Like it's front men, and as you get higher and higher and higher, and you will, I don't think people will ever see who. The people are on on the top of the pyramid. Yeah, I'm gonna have to leave you because I gotta go. I got an appointment with my security people. All right. Um. Okay. I guess I can I call you tomorrow. Or? Sure. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.